picture both these states. Lament and weep for the sentence passed on sinners. Mourn while you are doing this, frightened that you too may be among them. But rejoice and be glad at the blessings that await the righteous, and aspire to enjoy them and to be delivered from the torments of hell. See to it that you never forget these things, whether inside your cell or outside it. This will help you escape thoughts that are defiling and harmful. Fast before the Lord according to your strength, for to do this will purge you of your iniquities and sins. It exalts the soul, sanctifies the mind, drives away the demons, and prepares you for God's presence. Having already eaten once, try not to eat a second time the same day, in case you become extravagant and disturb your mind. In this way, you will have the means for helping others and for mortifying the passions of your body. But if there is a meeting of the brethren, and you have to eat a second and a third time, do not be disgruntled and surly. On the contrary, do gladly what you have to do. And when you have eaten a second or a third time, thank God that you have fulfilled the law of love and that he himself is providing for you. Also, there are... There are occasions when, because of a bodily sickness, you have to eat a second and a third time, or more often. Do not be sad about this. When you are ill, you should modify your ascetic labors for the time being, so that you may regain the strength to take them up once more. As far as absence from food is concerned, the Divine Logos does not prohibit the eating of anything, but said, See... Even as I have given you the green herb, I have given you all things. Eat, asking no questions. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man. Genesis chapter 9 verse 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 25, and Matthew chapter 15 verse 11. To abstain from food, then, should be a matter of your own choice and an ascetic labor. Gladly bear vigils sleeping on the ground and all other hardships, looking to the glory that will be revealed to you and to all the saints. For the sufferings of this present time, says the Apostle, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. If you are disheartened, pray, as the Apostle says, Book of Jason, chapter 5, verse 13. Pray with fear, trembling, effort and with inner watchfulness and vigilance. To pray in this manner is especially necessary because the enemies are so malignant. For it is just when they see us at prayer that they come and stand beside us, ready to attack, suggesting to our intellect the very things we should not think about when praying. In this way they try to take our intellect captive and to make our prayer and supplication vain and useless. For prayer is truly vain and useless when not performed with fear and trembling, with inner watchfulness and vigilance. When someone approaches an earthly king, he entreats him with fear, trembling, and attention. So much the more, then, should we stand and pray in this manner before God the Father, the Master of all, and before Christ the King of kings. For it is he whom the whole spiritual host and the choir of angels serve with fear and glorify with trembling. And they sing in unceasing praise to him, together with the Father who has no origin, and with the all-holy and co-eternal Spirit, now and ever, and through all the ages. Amen. There is the word Logos printed with an asterisk next to it, so we will look it up in the glossary. In Greek, Logos, the second person of the Holy Trinity, or the intellect, wisdom and providence of God, in whom and through whom all things are created. As the unitary cosmic principle, the Logos contains in himself the multiple Logoi, inner principles or inner essences, thoughts of God, in accordance with which all things come into existence at the times and places, and in the forms appointed for them 
each single thing thereby containing in itself the principle of its own development. It is the logoi, L-O-G-O-I, contained principally in the logos and manifest in the forms of the created universe that constitute the first or lower stage of contemplation.